I'll admit, man. I will admit, I'll bite, I'll say it right here. I was on the why did they do that train. All the way back in 2019. I shouldn't say all the way back, it makes it seem like a long time ago. It was only two years ago. Back at the 2019 NHL Entry Draft, the Ottawa Senators had themselves the first pick in the second round of the draft, 32nd overall. And after day one, where we had the Moritz Siders and the Turcotts and the Caulfields and the Pod Colsons all go, I was saying to myself, you know what? These Ottawa Senators, man, these Sens are in a good, good, good spot. Sure, they missed out on their top of the draft pick because of that Matt Duchesne Colorado Avalanche trade. Okay, they didn't get Bowen Byram, that sucks. But they have themselves a chance to get a very good player at the start of round two. Arthur Kaliev is available. You have Bobby Brink, he's here too. Niels Hoaglander, Raphael Lavoie. You got some pretty good names here at the top of the second round. And right off the bat, they took a guy whose name really didn't enter my mind as one of those guys, because they took Shane Pinto. Now, immediately after, Kaliev and Brink went side by side. We had made videos throughout the entire year talking about Bobby Brink and Kaliev specifically and why I was high on them and why I thought they could be potentially elite-level prospects. But Shane Pinto was not really that, in my opinion. Back in 2018-19, Shane Pinto was playing for both the Tri-City Storm and the Lincoln Stars in the USHL. He was barely a point-per-game guy, kind of went alive in the playoffs, and I was kind of thinking to myself, wow, would I have drafted Shane Pinto, one of the older players in the draft, a two-way potential center who was a point-per-game in the USHL, over Arthur Kaliev, who was one of the best goal-scoring prospects in the draft, I thought personally he had the best shot out of everybody in the draft. Would I draft him over Bobby Brink, who, even though he was small, he was playing in the same league, and he was scoring the lights out like crazy because Bobby Brink, despite not having the foot speed, had some very quick acceleration and a very good mind for the game and a great shot? Would I have drafted Shane Pinto over these guys? Eh, I don't really know. At the end of the day, though, L.A., Philly... You guys are good. You guys got these players straight out of the second round. But I was kind of wrong, you know? Not saying that I was wrong because Kaliev and Bobby Brink are bad, but because Shane Pinto has shown his entire value off here. And it's so great because it's only a glimpse of what is going to come in the future for the Ottawa Senators. Shane Pinto last night for the Ottawa Sens against the Winnipeg Jets went out there with his very first multi-point NHL game. He came out here with two assists, assisting on Connor Brown's goal, as well as one of the Stutzla goals. Stutzla, by the way, got himself a hat trick. The Brown-Stutzla-Pinto line has been absolutely great for the Senators right now, especially in last night's game. And sure, I know they were playing the Jets. The Jets really have been a big punching bag for the NHL and amongst Jets fans specifically over the past few weeks. But the Sens trending upwards, going out there, giving Stutzla his first NHL hat trick. Magnifique right there. And Shane Pinto being a part of that line, alongside a round two is really making me rethink my entire analysis of that Pinto pick back at the 2019 draft. Pinto's got five points in his last five games. The Sens are 8-1-1 one, and one with Pinto in the lineup, and he was a plus three yesterday. He also, get this, was bringing over his biggest trait that was making him such a superstar at the NCAA level, the face-offs. Shane Pinto went out there with a 75% face-off win percentage. Yeah, good for him. It was one of his best attributes with the North Dakota Fighting Hawks, where he would go out there and just win games worth of face-offs, not lose a single face-off in some games. And now he's in the NHL being like, yeah, okay, face-offs is easy, I can do that. Here, Mark Scheifele? Nah, I don't care. Pierre-Luc Dubois? Nah, I'll win the face-off, it's all good, fam. This dude, man, Shane Pinto, can't believe he is doing this as another young guy in the Ottawa Senators. He's 20 years old. He only turned 20 a few months ago. But the Sens, in a spot where they're so young, all their guys are U25, pretty much, on their top six. And you have a very, very good core that can still produce points against what should be some pretty good North Division competition. 
Shane Pinto isn't really going to be the guy that I'm going to say is ever going to become a number one, top of the line, you know, just 100-point Connor McDavid-like center. I don't think anybody's expecting that, but just a guy who could go out there, win draws, be a solidified presence, and get some points once in a while. You know, this guy's a baller. They were giving him penalty kill time right at the start of his NHL career. Who gives a 20-year-old rookie penalty killing time in the NHL when he's brand new in the league. And guess what? He actually looked pretty good whenever he was going out there penalty killing. He's out there aggressive, really forcing the opposition to make moves, keeping them tight on their toes. Him and Alex Formanton, by the way, doing very good things for the Ottawa Senators penalty killing unit. And you know what? At this point, it's kind of like, you know, it's starting to come to me, the value to these picks and the prospects and all that. Because sure, would I say Arthur Kaliev has the ceiling to become a 45 NHL goal scorer one day? Maybe. I'd say the ceiling does exist. But Kaliev's not going to give you that work ethic shorthanded like Shane Pinto is. You're not going to get that same ability out of a Bobby Brink because Bobby Brink just isn't capable enough, I think, to keep up with his foot speed. He's smart. Don't get me wrong. I love Bobby Brink in his game, but he's not that kind of guy to be put in those kinds of situations. Whereas Pinto, he's got that offensive edge. He can play with Tim Stutzla. That's awesome to see. And he's got these other contributions to the game. It makes sense why a team would value that over the Kaliebs and the Brinks and all that. It's just... Back then, in the USHL with the Lincoln Stars, I didn't really see it all too much. It really started to come about, though, when Shane Pinto was at the NCAA level, doing amazing things as a freshman, and eventually becoming a Hobie Baker finalist at the end of this season with Cole Caulfield. And to think, man, you still got all the other guys on the team. We made our video talking about the Sens and their decor, how those guys are all really good despite being really young. What about those forwards, man? Brady Kachuk is future captain material. I say this all the time, but the Sens, honestly, I think there's a good reason to go out there and fear the Senators for the next few seasons, because if Pinto is giving teams trouble now... Just imagine when Pinto's 25, when Tim Stutzla is 23, when Brady Kachuk is in his prime too. I'm kind of sitting here thinking, you know what, I love what the entertainment value is here. Because it's entertaining hockey. Watching Shane Pinto on the penalty kill is entertaining, and this guy is actually doing such a good job at that, despite the fact that he's only 20, despite the fact that he's a rookie, despite the fact that he should not be winning all these face-offs. He's going out there and doing all that. Talk to me in the comments what you think about Pinto, the draft, the entire thing that I spoke about here with Bobby Brink and Kaliev and all the other guys in that 2019 second round. Sure, I do think the Kings and the Flyers are happy with the players they took, but at the end of the day, I think the Sens are pretty happy about who they got in Pinto as well. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about Pinto and the entire conversation here. Do you forgive me for being kind of wrong about the pick in the past? I'm certainly trying to forgive myself over here because it's an interesting learning lesson to acknowledge what the Senators projected in Pinto's game back in 2018-19 that led to this amount of success this early at the NHL level. So, talk to me in the comments if you think I hope you enjoyed this with Ash Rolls and I9. And, bye. <laughs>